Okay, so hi, my name is Charlene. I'm a uh, fifth year journalism major, and um, I'm, my presentation is going to focus more on my education a la carte because that's exactly how I felt in the journalism department when I, well, not when I started. So basically, everyone starts out pretty much like any other university in your freshman year. Your courses are chosen for you, you go through the classes, and when I got to my second year, I was really um, confused as most people are about what they want to do specifically in their major and I really needed a lot of guidance and I think um, I got that from the team of advisors in the journalism department, in the co-op departments, in at international co-op departments. So the first part of my presentation is flexibility and you may not see how it relates to what's on the bottom but I'm about to bring it together. So I feel like my department was really flexible in letting me complete two Dialogues of Civilizations, two international co-ops, and a study abroad within my five-year program. And every time that I tell people that I've, I've gotten the chance to do all this, they ask me, how do I fit it in? And that's a huge question because a lot of people feel like they don't have the option to do these things in their majors. So I had a lot of control over my choices from the very beginning. Um, and my department was a major factor in that because I remember in my sophomore year thinking, I don't actually know what I want to do in this journalism major. Maybe co communications is a better fit for me. And I, was, and I did all my paperwork to leave the department. And Dan Kennedy, the faculty advisor slash mentor at the moment, um, <coughs> took a minute, took one minute of his time while he, you know, while I asked him to sign my papers to leave the department. And he said, you know, explore what you want to do. Like, newspaper is not the only thing that's in the department. There are other classes. He was very really informed on what, um, he was very responsive to what I was telling him about my struggle. And a lot of, a lot of people don't feel like they have anyone to talk to when they feel a little bit lost. So, Explore I did. I went to Brazil to learn about how Brazil became a BRIC country, how it has one of the fastest growing economies, um, their role in internet, their uh, increasing role in international affairs and um, relations with the U.S. I went to France, and on my Dialogue to France, I actually visited the Geneva Dialogue in Switzerland and got to visit the um, American Red Crescent and Red Cross Museum, which definitely shaped my understanding of what I could do with journalism because um, a main focus of the museum is POW um, care and kind of the track of POWs and um, war throughout the years. And since they have a, um, an extensive exhibition on war from the time that the Red Cross, Red Cross was founded, and you could go through every year and see the conflict that was going on. So I learned about like cluster munitions and things like that. And I thought, what? I said, wow, maybe I can go into foreign correspondence. So it was from these very different dialogues that I learned about different things that I could do within my major and different things I could report on that piqued my own interest and necessarily didn't fit into the class structure that I, that I had at the time. So then I did co-ops. And my first co-op um, in Ghana was a result of what I wanted to do with international affairs because I picked up a minor and I said maybe I want to be uh, work for an NGO, maybe I want to work for a humanitarian organization and I got there and it taught me a lot about business and project management and things like that and it was really unexpected so I said well maybe I don't want to do this but I got the experience, figured out what I didn't want to do which is a big component of co-op and then when I came back it brought me right back to the department. When I went to Singapore, I wanted to do a media production co-op. It was in line with the video production classes I had been taking. And, it, and by them telling me to go explore, it brought me full circle right back into the journalism department. So basically, my message is support. I say take the extra minute in, within your departments to try to figure out what students need and what they want to do because a lot of times students will just switch majors and that's the, easy, that's the easy out pretty much. And I feel like if you see the potential in your students like Dan Kennedy, Kelly, um, Kellyanne Murphy, and Frankie Gonzalez and International Co-ops on me, um, then you can steer them in the right direction. You can give them the correct kind of guidance and encourage experiential opportunities. And I say that I mean, it seems a bit redundant to say at Northeastern, but there are so many students on this campus that has this amazing global co-op program, that has amazing study abroad and dialogue programs that feel like they cannot do it. And for me, I, that still baffles me, and I think that comes from 
them not having the support or them thinking they don't have the support. So I encourage all departments just to kind of reach out to some of their students that are thinking about switching or feel like they don't have time to do these experiential opportunities and provide alternatives. Because there's a huge difference between the advising team that's in the department that is connected closely with co-op and international co-op and the College of, um, I guess, CAMD's advising um, departments. because. You can go to your academic advisor and they won't know about the specific opportunities within the major that have experiential learning components or about the specific co-ops that are available to these students. So a lot of students go into the CAMD academic advisors thinking, oh, they can tell me what to do with my life, when actually they don't know anything about chemistry or journalism specific opportunities. So that's exact, that's all I wanted to say.